Hey guys, so guys, what's up? It's Spyro25. So guys, today I'm starting a new series called Minifigure Madness. As you can see, there's tons of freaking minifigures in here. I'm gonna pick three of them out randomly, not looking, and um, I'll, I'm going to um, uh, say who the character is. I'm going to uh, say what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'm going to rate it out of 10. Uh, 10 being the best. So, uh, yeah, let's hop right into it. Okay, so, not looking. Okay, grab that, not looking. Grab that, and not looking. Okay, I've grabbed all three. So, um, I have this bag of weapons here. Yeah, don't, just ignore all this. This is just extra parts in a ship. Um, but yeah, I have a bag of weapons here. And, uh, yeah, I'll equip these guys with weapons, and you can see who they are. So, guys, here's the first minifigure, uh, Sunside Tin. And, uh, yeah, let's hop right into this. So, uh, what I like about this character is the, uh, the headpiece. I think that's very different. Um, the robes are quietly massable and could definitely be used, um... I definitely like the set that he comes in, the Jedi Starfighter, which came out, I think, 2013, sounds right. Um, uh, and the detail that this character has is definitely nice. Um, what I don't like about this character is, um, the, uh, the face. I feel like it seems a bit old, in a way, even though in the movie he's not too old, um... Uh, yeah, I, that's really the only thing I dislike about this character. Some of these characters are kind of hard. Um, uh, I also don't like the uh, durability of the paint on the headpiece. I had another one of these characters, and all the paint rubbed off on the headpiece. So that made me pretty mad. And uh, yeah, um, what I'd rate this character is probably a 7 out of 10. Uh, because, you know, definitely not probably my favorite minifigure, but, uh, definitely something worth picking up if you are a Star Wars fan. Also, it is used for when I set up battles. He's just one of the kind of side Jedi. It's nice to have, like, a just side Jedi leading a battalion, so that's another thing I like. But, uh, yeah, let's jump on into the next guy. This next guy here is Commander Wolf, um, the leader of the Wolf Pack squadron maybe of clones and um yeah let's uh jump right in um he uh what i like about this character is the variety the color um i like him pretty much all around um i really like the design of the wolf on the helmet but that's more about the character itself not the minifigure um but, yeah, um, what I dislike about this character is, uh, the pants. I think those are kind of odd, um, because I feel that they should be white with, uh, the dark bluish gray, uh, markings, because it kind of, like, stands out from the rest. Um, I feel that the base color should be white, and they should have put markings on. Um, what I also dislike about the character is the helmet. Uh, that sounds a bit weird, but, um, I really hope that they make a new version of Commander Wolf with the, uh, the newer episode, uh, 2 Phase 1 Trooper helmet. Um, if you don't know what that looks like, um, uh, just look up some of the more recent, uh, episode 2 sets. But, uh, I hope that they make a more recent version of this, and, um, yeah, he's just holding the, uh, Standard Lego blaster rifle there. And yeah, let's hop on into the next guy. And I'm sorry, I said let's hop into the next guy. I meant let's go to the rating right now. Um, I'd rate this guy in two ways. It depends upon some of the other figures you have. If you have uh, the rest of the wolf pack or even just one or two other wolf pack members, I'd probably rate this a six if you don't. Um, I'd probably rate this, like, a 4, because, you know, it's, I think the set that he comes in is, uh, fairly expensive, so, if you're looking for just the character, like, I mean, I could get him, and he could be, like, a clone trooper battalion leader, but it doesn't really make sense to have him without the wolf pack. 
So, uh, yeah. So this next character is the newer version of the Gonk Droid from the Sandcrawler set, if you haven't seen my review on that. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a figure that is pretty hard to say what you like and what you don't like about it, because it is so simple. So, uh, what I like about it is the size. So, compared to the past Gonk Droid, which came in the, or at least the past Gonk Droid that I got, which came in the, uh, the, uh, advent calendar a while ago, uh, I think it was, it, I think it might have been 2014, whichever the one that came with the, like, Super Santa Darth Maul or whatever, um, so I like the size, um, the build is fairly nice, this, uh, printed piece can be used for a lot of different things, like, uh, if I had more of these, I'd probably use them for, uh, like, controls in a ship, or maybe, like, a door of some sort. Um, but yeah, that's a fairly massable piece there. Um, let's just give a side view here. Um, this is him from the side. Just got a little stud brick there. Um, but yeah, um, what I dislike about the character is, uh, the simplicity of it. I feel that it should be more detailed. Um, the build is kind of annoying because when you try and take him off anything, his legs freaking come off. So maybe you should... Lego, find a way to somehow build this guy's leg without using studs like so. Uh, I don't know, maybe if you tried using uh, one of these pieces somehow, one of these uh, mini leg pieces, um, that could work, but yeah, so that's what I dislike. Um, so getting this figure is fairly hard, so... Uh, I really like the Sandcrawler set, but it's definitely got its price. So, if you're just buying this character by itself, um, then I'd probably rate it, like, a 4. But if you're buying the Sandcrawler set, um, you know, it's worth it to get the Sandcrawler and all the rest of the droids. Um, this is definitely on the downside of the droids in the Sandcrawler set. So guys, that is about it for episode 1, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time with the next three figures. Peace out.